Welcome to the Sunset Flip Wrestling Podcast with your hosts, Darren. What the hell is going on? And Double C. I don't know. Covering five hours of WWE programming. You'd think this shit would get stale after a while, but apparently not. You can follow us at Sunset Flip or at Dash 182 because this is the Sunset Flip Wrestling Podcast. Yeah. Yes, indeed it is. And here I thought I was on Dropkick. Oh, wait, that was the other podcast. Yeah, that's like a few months ago, dude. That's like four, five. Wow, that's a long time ago. I think Punk was still faced by then. Yes, he was still faced then. Oh, how times fly. Yeah. Yeah, but... Okay, so we have another five hours, do, 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 as the intro said. Uh, we have a SmackDown and a Raw. SmackDown from the 1st of February. And Monday Night Raw from the 4th. Alright, well... I know what to say about Raw, but let's get started with SmackDown, naturally. SmackDown, okay. So the show opens up with Alberto Del Rio in the parking lot. He has a mm-hmm. stick with him. He has a stick with him. Yes. He's going for the Teddy Roosevelt gambit. Something like speaking, that. Speaking softly and carrying a big stick. Yeah, it's almost like that one SmackDown a long time ago with, I think it was Sheamus and Alberto Del Rio. Or what's a big uh, show? I don't know. One of them. Anyways. Now we go into the ring with Booker T and his... Big super announcement for the World Heavyweight Championship. Mm-hmm. He's in the ring with a bunch of superstars. And he says that he's going to set up the Elimination Chamber match. However, he's not going to tell anyone who's going to be in it. He says mm-hmm. that former champions have to impress him to get a spot. <sighs> You know, I'd be pissed off by this angle because, you know, the whole champions thing, go, once again, going with the worldwide champions things rather than the newcomers getting in and getting their chance. But, you know, that's money in the bank. That's pretty much what money in the bank is for. Mm-hmm. So, but I don't I don't mind this as much simply because Elimination Chamber can be a little bit more messy and it, and more fun, so you probably want more the guys who can pull out the gam, pull out the uh, big cards out, rather than just a bunch of small guys. Right. And thus comes in the returning Jack Swagger, who I've been waiting for to return for a while now. You have? Yes. Oh, good. Huh. You're probably the only one. Oh, me and Jr. JR is big on Jack Swagger, too. Well, I think it's the Oklahoma. Booker T as well. Booker T as well. Yeah, it, I guess it's the Oklahoma thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, he's he's sporting a new haircut. And he looks a lot bigger. He looks a lot bigger. He looks very menacing. Oh, yeah, he does. He looks like he's about to kick the ever-loving shit out of somebody. Mm-hmm. And he goes... He's disappointed in the direction of WWE in general. And he's going to shake things up. That sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, whatever. And then and then Dolph Ziggler is also there. He's all like, I don't want to be a part of this match. I have a briefcase. I'm leaving. And he leaves. Well, that was about five... Minutes of wasting my time. Thank you, Dolph Ziggler. You mind mind just eating breakfast in front of me as well? That probably will be the same freaking thing. Yes, but he would show off during eating. Or something like that. If he does that, I'm smashing the jug of milk in his face. And he's going to sell that too. <laughs> I'm going to smash the jug of milk in his face and then come up with the table and once again... Smash him in the face until the bleach mixes with the blood. All right. So we have our first. I have anger issues. How can? Yeah. You tell. Yeah. Okay. 
So, first match of the night, Team Hell No versus Scene Cara and Rey Mysterio. Now, this is a match where JBL discusses the attract- attractiveness of goats. Let that sink in. <laughs> okay, Tycho Brahe. Ah, uh, so... Sorry, that's the only other goat fucker I know. Besides 8-Bit Mickey. <laughs> Moving... Okay, so... Uh, things break down for Team Hell No, and Mysterio ends up winning because they're in San Diego. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you gotta go with the hometown favorite sometimes. Right. Unless you're, Ty- unless you're Tyson Kidd. Right. <laughs> then you just get, you know... Injured. Then you get beat. Then you get the beat the shit out of you by Alberto, and then get made fun of. Right. Uh, we go back outside with Alberto Del Rio, and he says he's Thank getting you. air. Ah, uh, yes, air. Yes. The wonderful pa- power of air, mm-hmm. and a big stick, naturally. Yes, and a big stick. We go to the second match: the Great Khali versus Jinder Mahal. Can we skip this one, please? Uh, sure, but Kali wins and Natalia jumps. Backstage, no. we go... <laughs> I could just watch a Divas match for Natalia to jump, but... <laughs> uh... Yeah. Uh, I don't know. <gasps> yeah, backstage... It's a toss-up. Yeah, backstage, we go with the Road Scholars and Booker T... And they go, we are dissolving the team, but we're still best friends. And then they hug. Yay. You know, real bromance going on right there. Yeah. Almost like if it was a parody of what uh, Kane and Daniel Bryan were going through. If you can make a parody out of a parody. I've seen it before. That's what the scream. Mo- that's what the scary movies are about. Oh, I thought that was a parody of a movie. No, Scream is a parody movie because it's making fun of tropes within horror movies, and scary movie is a parody of a parody of that parody. Oh, I thought it was just being a parody of being a movie. That too, but <laughs> moving that on. That too. <laughs> you can't win with scary movie. Oh, okay. So I have better chances with the Brooklyn Brawler. Ooh. <laughs> uh, we go back to Del Rio. He's still outside waiting for people. We go somewhere else. We go to a match. Damian Sandow versus Sheamus. Holy crap! Are we having a match? Yes, it's a match, and Sandow is super aggressive, and Sheamus is like. Stop hurting me! And then Seamus is all like, Okay, that's enough. I'm going to beat you up now. But that's short-lived, because the shield arrives and beats down Seamus, because they don't like Seamus. You know, I would be pissed off at this, naturally. Yeah, you would. But, as it did something with Raw, I'm not... It comes back. There is involvement in Raw, so I'm actually pleased with this. You'll hear the reason why Okay. a little bit later. Later. All right. We go to another match. We go Randy Orton versus Wade Barrett. Wade Barrett? Yeah. And Wade Barrett accidentally uh, elbow post to post. I mean, elbows to post. That's got to hurt. Those things are metal. Yes. And the ring moved. <laughs> I made that part up. Well, if that was that would be pre- that actually would be pretty awesome to see. And then RKO Orton wins. Hooray! He beat the Hooray. Intercontinental Champion again. So are we going with Orton being the Ar- Intercontinental Champion angle? No, we're going with Randy Orton is being impressive to Booker T angle. Oh, Randy Orton is just being awesome, pretty much. Yeah. 
if you could say that. Mm -hmm. uh, backstage, we go with Wade Barrett. And he was about to give an interview where he spots someone and beats them up. Apparently, it's Bo Dallas, but we hardly ever see him because he gets thrown over some equipment. And it actually is Bo Dallas. Yeah. But, uh, like I said, it was horribly shot. I actually saw this on Raw. It was pretty badly shot. It was pretty much just Wade Barrett's back the most of the time. Yep. Now, we go to the match that I was looking forward to. Kofi Kingston versus Jack Swagger. This was you... odd. I know better. They're making Kofi a big jobber right now, dude. Well, here's the thing. And Swagger just came back, dude. Yeah, I know, I know. But I I know Sw uh, Jack Swagger matches where, you know, he would be dominant and then he would like, be all, like, whipped. And then he would lose. This time, Swagger is hyper-aggressive, totally beats an ever-living snot out of Kingston, then gets whipped a bit, and, let's see, takes advantage of Kofi because he kicked, kicked the announce table. Very awkwardly. And then Swagger hits the ankle lock. You know, with him pushing with his fingers out. Yeah, and actually, his the ankle lock that was shown wasn't exactly good because Kofi was never really on his stomach at the time. So it was more like a leg lock from the air-ish. Yeah. In retrospect, it wasn't very good. <laughs> I think the squash match between him and Santino on the Raw show was a little bit better. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Swagger was a beast on that. Next, we go back outside once again. Alberto Del Rio is outside, and he spots a big bus. Apparently, it's Big Show's. Big Show comes out and tries to climb on a car. Oh, yes, I saw this. Pretty much Alberto is just destroying a car while Big Show is just dodging out of the way yes, of... Yes, someone else's car. Random. And then Big Show climbs onto the roof of the car. And Del Rio slams him onto the roof of the car. Big Show then gets into apparently a Taurus somehow. And drives I off. Don't... Your guess is as good as mine. Right. Maybe he magically appeared in there. Right. Yeah, he used magic. Big Show is a magician. Anybody who knows that must be killed, though. Uh-oh. Okay, now we go to main event time. We have Dolph Ziggler versus Alberto Del Rio. I'm very pissed off, Alberto Del Rio. Hmm, excuse me. And in this match... It, it was pretty standard, and uh, Del Rio was all like, I'm going to beat you up. Ah, da, 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 da. I'm really aggressive now. He's just being really aggressive in this match. Yeah. Uh, there is very light interference from Big E and gets ejected for it. Mm hmm And... Uh, poor Big E Langston. He's, he's got nothing. Yeah, he really is just big old nothing. Uh, how are... Just, uh... Which is sad, because, you know, you could probably do something with him. Right. So, however, I did enjoy the match, and Ziggler taps out. Yay. Mm -hmm. And Dad's then... like a bitch. Yeah, and then, on the Titan Tron, Big Show is backstage, and he has Ricardo on him, and punches Ricardo. Ooh! Punches Ricardo in the face. And apparently it snapped his neck. Yeah. And he's dead now. Yeah, he's dead now. And Alberto's like, no! Runs backstage. It's like, get the doctor! And then the trainer's there. I said, trainer literally says, I just got here. Or something like that. Not literally, but figuratively. Whatever. Ah, Smackdown! 
this SmackDown. You know, being the interspace between Raw and pay-per-views. Right. Also, there was supposed to be an Intercontinental Cup that was canceled because Wade Barrett says so. Yay. Uh, yeah. I love cups. Yeah, cups are kind of awesome because you can drink stuff out of them. That and, like, the tag team championship was awesome. Let's do that again with the Intercontinental and probably, like, get some of the smaller people in there. Like, we could get Kofi Kingston in there once in a while. Maybe Jack Swagger. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so we go to Monday Night Raw. Ooh, I'm happy about this show. I am extremely happy. Show starts off with CM Punk. He said there was one thing that happened, and he was screwed. Again. Pretty much he's saying the same thing that he said last time. He just got screwed. He got screwed. Mm -hmm. And he asked people in the crowd if he was in the video. Which he obviously wasn't. Right. And he claims that Vince doctored the video because Vince is holding all the cards and can make anything happen. I, at one point, I'm actually agreeing with him because I know Vince McMahon. And he would do something like this. Yeah. But Vince McMahon's supposed to be the good guy now in storyline. Right. He's he's no longer a bad guy because he can't take any more matches. Mm-hmm. And because he broke his hip. Yes. He broke uh, his hip. Which, to be fair, you did that on yourself, Vince. He probably needed a hip replacement anyway. And be like, oh, there he goes. I mean, you see the footage. It's not like they show it once. They show it like 50 times. Yeah, they show it a lot in this episode. And to be fair, he failed at landing properly. Yeah, you could see the thing cracking. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Also, I'm going to start keeping track of how many promos are in one show. Because it's WrestleMania season, and we have a lot of promos and video packages to get through. Yay! Right, indeed. But, one interesting thing is that CM Punk, once again, denies the truth. Denies the fact that he is not the champion anymore. Right. Let's see if he does it again tomorrow, and let's see if we hear a crow. Hmm. And if anybody you got that joke, you are a good Christian. Oh, Okay. Apparently, I'm not. Oh, come on. It's from when Jesus died. Uh, I think it was like St. Peter. St. Peter was t- was interrogated. He said he, den- he denied Jesus three times in the rooster crows. Okay. Pretty much what was uh, predicted from what uh, Jesus said would happen. But that's a, de- that's a theology uh, dialogue thingy. We're here to talk about wrestling. We're here to talk about men in skimpy tights, oiled up, and touching each other. Yes. <laughs> I uh, made that as gay as possible. Uh, Booker T interrupts. Oh, by the way, uh, thanks for that clip. I'm going to totally put that into the intro now. <laughs> What, the I'm as gay, making this as gay as possible, or men, or sweaty, oily men? That tights. <laughs> okay, so Booker T interrupts. He says that there's going to be a raw, active opponent for CM Punk. is either going to be Randy Orton, Rey Mysterio, or Chris Jericho. And to be quite honest, I was going for either Rey Mysterio or Jericho. I was thinking totally Jericho. It's like, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. What WrestleMania and, are we on again? Twenty-nine. Uh, oh yeah, it's like yeah. oh yeah, that's right. There was yeah, a twenty-eight. 20, and twenty-eight, and they actually had a good match there. Yeah, they did. First match of the night: Ryback versus Antonio Cesaro. This was an all right match. I mean, both uh, both of them had the. Uh, nobody had actually. This is one thing I noticed a lot in this. Besides a few matches, not a lot of people had like 
dominating matches. They were very much back and forth matches. Right. Which I'm happy for. That actually shows that you want to entertain people because it's hard to entertain people when you do have a dominating match. And Cesaro does something new again. I forgot what it was, but he did oh. something new. Oh, was that the, uh, crap, what was that? That was when he was, uh, oh yeah, he, uh, like did that weird knee drop thing on Ryback. Yeah, I've never seen that done. You know, I've been watching wrestling pretty much straight for 13 years. Never seen that done. Same here. So, and then of course, this arrow tries to escape. He gets caught a couple times. He gets shell shocked for it. Right back wins. Uh, the only problem I have with this is you're burying your U.S. champ like no, to like no tomorrow. I mean, but but he beat the great Kali twice. So could. So could my aunt, and she's dead. Oh. Up next, we have a shield promo, because we got to reinduce, re, uh, reintroduce the people to the wrestlers that are currently active. <sighs> Honestly, you could have cut this and made this show shorter. Yeah, but I could, but I'm not going to because it's annoying. Yeah, annoying. that was the one Me? big thing, is, like, the promos, you could have cut this, this show ran long, and the only way you could have stopped that is cut a lot of the promos. Just make sure what was necessary was in there, but you didn't have to show the frickin' Shield promo. And I know I'm saying this to sound spiteful, but no, you could have actually just stopped up and not shown it. It was nicely done, but it was unnecessary. Yeah. I mean, it was just like last year during this time where on camera I was going through every single promo. You know, it's like, oh, it's another Triple H video package. It's an Undertaker video package. It's a Shawn Michaels video package. It's The Rock. You know, it's da 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 da. You know, all that stuff. Anyway. There was a lot of unnecessary things, which, yeah, I know takes away from the experience, but the wrestling matches were so good, I ignored them. Goddamn Snooky! Okay. Whatever. <laughs> Cena goes backstage, and Figgy Guerrero's with him. He says he's gonna stop the shield. Just like he tried to last time, and he got beat up for it. Okay. Because he's Super Cena now. Remember, he's it's the best year of his career, and he's gonna... Yeah. It's his tenth anniversary year, so he's going to be all he's gonna be all shits and all shit kicking and ass whipping. Yeah, and nobody's gonna stop him because he's John Cena, he's the face bap 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 bap. Pretty much. Okay, so we go second match of the night, Santino versus Jack Swagger in a Jack Swagger proves that he has balls match. Yeah, this was pretty much Santino getting the shit kicked out of him. Yeah, Santino tries to do his power walk and he gets like clothesline for it. No, he gets like a knee or something. He dropped on him. Yeah. Gets a knee in the stomach for it, which was hilarious. I'm not going to deal with this. <laughs> uh, sometimes you just need that Indiana Jones joke. So, Swagger has an obvious chip on his shoulder. He wants to impress. He's done so. He has renamed his ankle lock submission. The Patriot Act. Into the Patriot Act. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ah, We're topical. Yeah, it's hilarious. Oh, God, speaking of fucking topical. All the freaking jokes about lights out for the Super Bowl. Oh. God damn it, WWE. Everybody I has get it. Yeah, everybody has to make their joke, and the guy who actually did it got caught and got fired. Ugh. <sighs> yeah. I I, that uh, shit like that pisses me off. I mean, sure, it's only 24 hours. 
It's like, get it in while you can, I guess. I, I was done once the lights came back on. That was my deal. I was making fun of the entire thing. When the lights came back on, okay, now we can resume. Hey, Beyonce actually made a decent halftime promo. Oh, look, Destiny's Child's back. So, after pimping the app again... Yes, they say the tutorial. Yes, the tutorial. I don't know, that's all I got. Okay, so third match of the night, Cody Rhodes versus Alberto Del Rio. With in a Cody in a Cody Rhodes has a new t-shirt match. They're milking that mustache to no one's end. Yep. And he has a new t shirt with a mustache and a comb. Which to be fair, I can't like I've said before, I can't see this. It's not that good of a mustache. It's not. And I that's the joke. That's the joke, but it's a, not a funny joke. Yeah. Yes, I... it is a bad mustache. So what? It's yeah. like making fun of Daniel Bryan's beard. Yeah, so what? He has a long beard. Yeah. I know like 50 million people who have long beards. I know 50 million people who have bad mustaches. I'm a guy who can't have a good mustache. It's not that funny. And I know it might sound like I'm picking on it because I'm being self-aware of shit like that, but no, it's just not a funny joke. Yeah. Anyways. Anyways. It's just... This is like uh, another one. This was actually a decent match. You know, both of them went back back and in between each other. You know, there was no domination. Yeah. It was enjoyable. You know, Alberto wins naturally. Mm. He gets on the mic. He says, he's all about the people now. Okay. Well, he's face. Yeah, he's a face. I know you're a face. But he's all like, I was wrong. Please forgive me. I'm about the people now and the poor people. Even though I'm filthy rich. It's like Ted DiBiase trying to be a face. It's weird. Senior. That's weirder. Because... How much shit Ted DiBiase Sr. has done to make himself the most unlikable person in the world. Yeah. It's like that. And the only reason why we like JBL is because he's hilarious. Because he's fucking insane. Yeah. And he, talk, and he climbed Mount Everest like a badass. Yeah. Yeah, but when he was having this near year-long title reign, you know, we were hating him and stuff. But you was still hilarious. Okay. Where were we? Oh, yeah. Big Show's in a hotel. He wants a rematch, and he wants the contract delivered to him. Because he's a big shit. Right. So, after... I don't get this. I know this might sound weird to me, but... You're not the champion... Yes, you deserve a rematch. But get your ass down here and sign it. But You don't deserve special privilege. But he goes, oh, oh, if I go down there, I'm going to hurt Alberto. So? It's a wrestling show. Right. Hurting people is part of the job. Well, apparently fighting is only done on Friday nights. Yeah, go figure. You have to be drunk ass stupid. Monday night, you're back to work. So, okay, raw active results after glitch, whatever. Chris Jericho wins, and people are shocked by it. I'm not shocked, but I am happy. Yeah, I wasn't shocked. I was happy too. But, you know, the commentators were like, what? The only person I didn't want was Randy Orton. Oh. Not because he's a bad wrestler, but 
it would be so much better to see either Ray or Chris go up against Punk. Mm -hmm. Right. Speaking of Ray Mysterio, he's going one on one with Daniel Bryan because he told. Yeah. Okay. So Daniel Bryan told Kane to wait backstage, and whatever he does, don't help him because he's going to prove his worth. And so they have a match. It was actually a really good match. Yeah, it was. Mysterio was on his A game this match. He was flipping like nobody's business. Yeah. Right. And so the finish goes. Uh, Ray goes for his big 619. Goes for a splash. And misses. Gets locked into no lock and Ray taps. And then somebody's going to get their ass kicked because Mark Henry comes down, finally back from soldier uh, surgery. Took him a long time. Over a year. Yeah, must... mm. Well, you need you need a big guy. You need like a really big intimidating motherfucker, and Mark Henry is a big intimidating motherfucker. Right. Uh, special note for Mark Henry is that. Uh, there were there was a lot of talk over the last year if he was going to retire. Basically, what he said was if he couldn't, you know, get back to one hundred percent, he would just flat out retire. Because this was serious for him. Okay, so he's back to one hundred percent. That's good for him. Yeah. Now, if we go and have Christian back too, but you know, yeah, you you're asking that. for everything. Yeah. So he completely demolishes uh, Mysterio. Sankara tries to come back and... Gets... He gets his ass whipped. Yeah, and... And he throws Daniel aside like a goddamn ragdoll. Yeah, and then he goes backstage to Kane. He's like, why didn't you come out for me? And then Kane's all like, you told no, me to stay you here. you said to stay here. And then he goes... You're not supposed to do what I tell you. Double standards much? Right. Then we go to a Brock Lesnar attack promo. Yay! Yay! Then I've we go. This already. Yeah, Back. That... yeah. Then we go backstage. Oh, not. It's not backstage. It's... We go back to the hotel. Where. He's on the phone waiting for the contract and he gets food instead. A rather small plate. He's got to watch his carbon take. So next we go Sheamus versus Kane. It's a sloppy match in my opinion. Yeah, I didn't pay much much to this match, so I could just write this one off as slop moving on. Yeah, Daniel Bryan comes down. He yells at Kane. He's like, where were you? Where were you? And then Kane gets bro kicked and then Sheamus wins. Yay. Now for the B plot of this whole, I mean, sorry, it's the A plot. Uh, Miss TV with uh, Paul Heyman. Miss kind of tries to uh, do his introduction Putting words in Heyman's mouth before Heyman's even there. Then Heyman interrupts. They go back and forth. Bah, 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 bah. And not to sound like taking the heel side, but Miz is a dick through this entire thing. He is. Alright, sure. Alright, sure. They're doing like the political shtick about, you know, trying to kiss up to Mr. McMahon. Right. Everybody does that. You don't have to call him out on it. And then he said, he tried to back Lesnar off, but that didn't happen. And then Vicky interrupts. And then she says that she's the one who signed Brock Lesnar to a new contract. Because she wants to be permanent general manager. So that's when the Miz starts insulting Vicky and Heyman at the same time. 
And Brock comes out and he's like, I'm going to rearrange your furniture because it all sucks. And he throws a chair at Miz that gets shown off camera. He gets thrown two chairs. Right. But we get to see it five more times mm-hmm. at the right angle. Ah, uh, sloppy production there. Yep. And then, uh, let's see, F5 to the Miz. Yay. Pretty much showing that uh, Brock Lesnar ain't putting up with anybody making fun of Paul Heyman. Right. Now we go to six match of the night. Uh, Randy Orton versus Wade Barrett again. Again. Duh. Okay. Oh, and Orton wins. Woo. And didn't care about this match either. Okay. Here we go. Main event time. Now Good. this match I do care about. Yes. See, I'm so pumped. I. So I'm going to make one little thing above this. The in- they fucked up Jericho's intro. They played the music too soon. Uh, that's the way they're doing it now with him. They did it at the Rumble. They did it last week. It's... I don't like it. Yeah. They played the music too soon. They should have the lights turned down. Break the wall down! Him standing there with his black... With his awesome lighted jacket, and then going after it. Yeah. But hey, CM Punk versus Chris Jericho. Match of the year so far. was awesome. I thought I was watching a pay-per-view. I was literally yelling at my TV, This is a pay-per-view match! How the hell did I get this? So... What I think happened at the very end, I think uh, when uh, Punk's uh, back went out, I think that was supposed to be the end point instead of throwing Jericho into the turnbuckle again Mm -hmm. and trying to do it with more momentum because his back was hurting. The trainers after the match were pretty much checking up on Punk to make sure he was all right. Yeah, I think his back pretty much just quit on him. Yeah precautionary stuff but yeah uh, CM Punk wins in a great match you should get watch a YouTube of it you should yeah you should Jericho is awesome Punk is awesome in this match this was a brutal match to be fair it went back and forth like nobody's business and both guys were out by the end of it yeah Next up, we have we go backstage with Punk, and he has an interview, and Punk goes, The Rock, right now, he has a belt. I'm still the title holder. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Insane ramblings from a madman. And after that, we have a Hollywood Rock promo, because The Rock's champion, and Hollywood took notice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Here. Backstage with John Cena. He goes, The shield is pushing and I'm pushing back. Pretty much, yeah. And I'm going, he's got a death wish. We go back to the hotel because we need more segments and we're running over time. Uh, uh, Big Show gets a contract and then he... And then Alberto Del Rio shows up. It's like, I followed him. It's like, oh no, you didn't. And then they fight. And then Fixel rips off a leg of a table. And gets... Tries to, tries to beat him with it, but then... Uh, he go. Then he gets a face full of, like, a uh, fire extinguisher. Yes. I love that spot. That's gonna suck for your eyes afterwards. Yeah. It's my favorite weapon in a hardcore match. The fire extinguisher. Right? That's right next to Al Snow using the bowling ball. I love... I find that humorous that they keep the fire extinguishers always full in those matches. (laughs) Yeah. You know, in case they were knowing that they would be using it as... A distractionary tool. 
rather than just bonking somebody over the head with it. Or in this case, bonking somebody in the shoulder and knocking him out somehow. Yeah, which was weird. Uh, fire extinguisher. And then Alberto Del Rio leaves. After beating him up and throwing an extinguisher into his shoulder. Right. Uh, uh, we I skipped something, so we have to come back to it. Hall of Fame induction to Mr. Bruno San Martino. This was a long time coming. Hell has frozen over. Yes, it has. Cause... I've actually read online that uh, San Martino was actually enjoying how the differences were going along with uh, how WWE worked because of Triple H being there, being the lead now. Yeah. It was... The saying that this was a long time coming is pretty much an understatement. This was like a no chance in hell kind of thing happening. But over the last couple of years, it seems like that's been happening a lot. Yeah, it seems like... Seems like Raw... WWE is just... You know, they're trying to fix their mistakes. I mean, And they're doing it really impressively. I'm impressed with them. I you mean, know, they're getting old gripes out of the way. The Bruno San Martino thing, obvious. The, uh... What was the this? Bret Hart thing is the most the, obvious. The Bret Hart thing. The Randy Savage thing. When he got, uh... He signed up for a Legends contract when he was still alive, and he was uh, doing action figures and promos for the action figures. That was impressive. I mean, it's like, really? You're back? It's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Gotta oh, get that money. Back, baby. <clears throat> Dig it. Yeah. It's just one after another. It's the Paul Heyman thing, even. Yeah, I'm like... Yeah, Triple H must be doing a fan fucking tastic job in the back. He must be taking that rain and just riding it. I, I don't know how he's doing it, but he's been amazing. Yeah... So, I yeah, I've got to say, somebody in the back there is doing well in the business trope. And and it's not even yeah. in the past, you know, for past superstars. It's even current ones, you know. Yeah, I know. It's like, I think it's all Triple H is doing on yeah, this you one. Would not, on you would not have a year-long title reign for CM Punk without Triple H. Yeah, I think this is all Triple H is doing, so... When he stepped down from a wrestler and went full-on business, probably the best thing to happen to the company. Yeah. Okay, so... After marking out over Triple H's business decisions... After marking out at uh, Triple H just being awesome businessman, apparently. Yeah. Uh, we have Brad Maddox. He's in the ring. He goes, isn't... It, uh, I'm the one who did everything. I'm the hero. And I'll beat up the shield because I'm one guy and I always get beat up. It's not going to be John Cena. It's going to be me. You should all be worshipping me. And then the shield comes out and beats him up. Though I do love how... Though I do love what they say. Like They're trying to intimidate him. You're nothing more than a rat. This is something right out of, like, a 90s action cop movie. <laughs> I love buddy cop movies. No, this isn't buddy cop movie. This is, like, hardcore nine, early 90s action. Like, you're a rat. You're a rat. Well, you fucked up things for justice. Justice ain't free. So, after he gets beat up, John Cena, Ryback, and Sheamus... Do the same entrance. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, we're coming out first. And you guys follow us. How the hell they didn't notice them is beyond me. Maybe they were hiding out in the cupboards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they were getting 
They were blending into the snack shacks and stuff. They were waiting in line for pizza. Yeah. <laughs> no, I do find that hilarious. I, I can't imagine them just standing in front of their posters. Just stand still. Yeah. Just stand, stand still as the shield pass them by. And they just, like, break out of character quickly. Yeah, John Cena's at the merchandise stance. Yeah. Yeah, I want to get a John Cena and a Seamus and a Ryback t-shirt. Extra large. Okay, that's be seventy five dollars. What? That's outrageous. Okay. <laughs> I want to pay it too. <laughs> Anyways, I, oh so god, I can actually see him doing that too. <laughs> okay. So these guys come down. More guys it's come out. The shield tries to escape from the front. It's blocked off by other superstars. Mm -hmm. Mainly because these piss they've apparently pissed so many people off. They wanna, everybody wants to see them dead. Right. This is like something out of a gangster movie now. Yeah. And then they all fight, and then the shield goes, oh, oh, oh no, gotta get out of here, dudes. Mm -hmm. And they all escape, and the good guys are in the ring, and they're just basking in the glory of being awesome. Right. Now, like I've said before, I should be angry at this. I'm angry at it. But I'm not. I am. You know why? Why? Because they're finally doing something with the shield! They're not just randomly beating people up. Finally, they're doing something! And I'm not happy because John Cena had to gang up against the Shield. Sure, oh, there were only three participants. That could be considered a fair fight. However, if things went sour, you had eight other guys on the ramp. Uh, I think, then again, I think that was just, you could argue that was just karmic backlash for the Shield. I know. Well, they pissed off, so. Right. So you could argue that and it would be a valid point in story-wise logic form, you know, but I am I am stoked because now we can actually do something with them. Now their attacks will actually make meaning. Right. Hopefully. Three on three elimination chamber match. I could live with that in the elimination chamber. I will live with that. You know, we don't have Let's make all the matches of the night Elimination Chamber matches. Just keep that ring in there. Oh. We'll have so much blood and guts on the place, it will be... We're going to need a mop to clean everything up. Uh, so... There we go. That was Monday Night Raw. Good. It was good Raw. Good Raw. I enjoyed myself during this Raw. Mainly for the great ending... Well, not not just the shield ending, but the great main main event match. Yes. Yeah. That makes a raw for me. Like, if you give me one really good match, I can put up with a lot of shit. And not only that, there were also a bunch of other good matches along the way. Sure, there were a few crappy matches. Sure, there was a squash Jack Swagger match. But the first match and the final match were good. I enjoyed myself from mm -hmm. them. Yep. And of course, it's all about the stupid promos that we're going to see every single week. Yeah, you're just, this is nothing we're, new, dude. I, I know, I know. But we're in that season where it gets even worse. I know, I agree with you. Like, there's so things you can cut down and it'll make time a little bit easier. And we're going to cover, cover every single one of them. Yes, we are. Because it's WrestleMania season. It's fever, man. Uh, I don't know. I have a fever, but it's only for cowbells. What? Okay, so yeah. We went through everything really, really fast, but hey, 
It's WrestleMania. We're excited. We got to cover a lot of stuff, a lot of information, all that jazz. Yeah, see, this is what happens when I'm not angry. When I'm not beating angry, I don't, I don't get to yell as much. I guess it's just not as fun. It's gonna be so plenty of yelling. Oh, trust me, I'll yell sooner or later. Good. Later, I'll be so red over here. You'll discuss. I'll be able to disguise myself as an orange, as a tomato. Yeah. I just hope they get a good celebrity this time. Or they use The Rock as a celebrity for this year's WrestleMania. I think that might be the case. Yeah, because... So, showing how things are going, they don't need a celebrity this time around. Right. You know how many movies Rock is coming out with? I think it's like Snitch, the G.I. Joe movie, which I've been waiting for. Which is probably going to suck because they added... Shannon Tatum in the fucking thing when it should be about Bruce Willis and The Rock. And then there was like, there was the Fast 6 movie mm-hmm. that he's in. But that's three movies already. And then, yeah, the, the Snitch movie, and then there's also going to be the one where he's all roiled up. Oh, that's four. That's the Michael Bay movie that actually looks like 90s Michael Bay, so it might be good. Eh. I don't know. Pearl Harbor. I, you know, if they're doing more bad boys than Pearl Harbor. If it's Michael Bay doing bad boys, it's fine. Yeah. So, yeah, we got a lot of stuff to look forward to. A lot of stuff because we got Elimination Chamber in two weeks. And then the WrestleMania thing. I'll be crazy. All that stuff, and Mr. Johnson. I'm actually Johnson. excited. You know, we're getting shit done. Shot, shit's done. Now that football's over, this is where the good stuff comes in. Right. Okay. And so, we will catch you next time on the Sunset Flip Wrestling Podcast. Okay, oily sex.